eight years ago, we established um, a program called the Primary Care Initiative in Alberta. And this was an initiative that saw, for the first time, doctors work with teams of other providers uh, in, uh, in networks of local clinics uh, to try to address primary health care uh, needs of, of the communities they serve. And we've certainly seen a, a lot of uh, success, uh, innovation in chronic disease management, patient education, uh, other initiatives. We have some uh, PCNs, as we call them, that have done a very good job of um, measuring outcomes in their population and they're, they're offering things like uh, early screening for colorectal cancer um, and other, other types of screening to high-risk populations. So we've invested a lot of money in that area. We have 40 primary care networks in the province uh, to date. About uh, 2,500 citizens live, uh, sorry, 2,500,000 citizens uh, live in a community served by a primary care network. But we're still not seeing the types of results in, in the management of chronic disease and in access generally that we would like to see. Uh, so as a result, we're, we're undertaking the development of a new primary health care strategy for the province. Our goal is to enroll every citizen uh, with a primary care team in or near their own community. And we're trying to use a lot of the tools that are being talked about at this conference to, to better manage uh, conditions in the long term. We understand that uh, uh, physicians, when supported by other non-physician providers, people like nurse practitioners, uh, can offer a lot more to a, a patient uh, group than a physician working alone. And that's, that's as true in Canada as it is in other places. But um, you know, one, of the, one of the challenges that we face is, uh, is people aren't always quick to recognize that opportunity. Uh, in the case of physicians, for example, during this eight-year period, we have seen uh, physician compensation continue to increase uh, at about 30 percent uh, over the last five years alone. We're seeing uh, most of those increases uh, being allocated to specialists and subspecialists and very, uh, very little to uh, family physicians, geriatricians and psychiatrists, which are the three I think that have the biggest impact on primary health care. So uh, we are uh, committed to enroll the entire population over the next few years <clears throat> with a primary care team. Uh, we are going to be introducing a common electronic medical record which will be used in, in uh, the primary care environment. <clears throat> but we also want to go beyond that. Uh, we feel very strongly that the primary health care team can be a platform to actually try to influence the social determinants of health. So we're looking at opportunities to in incorporate, for example, early childhood development services in primary care teams. Uh, we want to see full integration of mental health and addiction services in every team. About 40% today of our, our visits to family doctors are for a mental health related issue. So the need is uh, considerable and, and so is the opportunity. Uh, I think what we, we need to do in Alberta and I think other countries are struggling with the same is to, is to be more systematic, to be less focused on innovation and pilot projects and to, to simply bridge the gap between what we know based on evidence works and what we actually choose to pay for from our healthcare system. Well, we, uh, we had a history in Alberta of uh, local uh, health care delivery through regional health authorities, as we call them. And so over the years, we reduced the number. We went from 17 to 9 and now to 1. Um, this was a huge change. Uh, Alberta Health Services, which is the name of the authority, uh, has 100,000 employees. It's the largest, fifth largest employer in Canada. And so the, uh, just the change management uh, involved with that alone was considerable. But I guess the other thing that most important to me that uh, we're continuing to struggle with is making all of our health professionals see that they have a true impact, a positive impact on the delivery of care. Uh, we made this decision quite quickly as a government. It was implemented over a very short period of time. It was quite controversial, to be honest, uh, in our um, in our province, but what we're seeing in terms of opportunities are the uh, is the chance to implement uh, policy initiatives that all Albertans can uh, share in uh, the benefits from. And so we have uh, clinical pathways now for things like lung cancer uh, that we're able to implement across the board. Uh, we're able to do a much better job, of course, in back office types of functions. We've consolidated uh, payroll systems and other 
uh, other systems resulting in a savings of about, eight, of about $800 million. And that money has been available to reinvest in the healthcare system. So we're beginning to see it come together. Uh, we remain convinced that a, a one uh, system for all model is what's best for the people in our province. But we must remember that we have to make room for local, local innovation and, and customization. There's always a temptation in these exercises to use kind of a cookie cutter uh, approach. And uh, so we don't want to lose sight of the fact that uh, ultimately the best health care is the health care that's community based. Uh, and, and so we have some strategies in place to help uh, ensure that.